Here's an apologist giving advice to doubting Christians. Hey, you. Anxious Christian dude. Yeah, you. The guy with the doubts. Stop listening to atheist YouTubers. It's time to stop! Turn off rationality rules. Turn off holy Kool-Aid. Turn off genetically modified skeptic. And turn off Matt Dillahoney. What's behind this advice is clearly the concern that people are falling away from the faith. But what's the logic to it? Well, the issue, according to Eric, is that too many Christians listen to opposing viewpoints without fully understanding Christian evidences. One common mistake I see from Christians struggling with their faith is that they try and prematurely flex their apologetic muscles by spending time listening to tons of atheist YouTubers, but they don't get the bulk of Christian evidences strong under their belt first. Until they can give a robust case for Christianity, it's foolish for people to listen to the other side to try to mitigate their biases. Listen, I know you want to mitigate against your biases by listening to the other side. I know that sounds like a wise thing to do, but you're actually being stupid. I don't think this is a straw man, but a pretty fair summary of what was said in the video. And Eric anticipates an obvious objection. At this point, I'm sure skeptics will laugh and say that I'm just circling the wagons and telling you to indoctrinate yourself first. Rather than framing this in terms of indoctrination, I think it's better to ask the question, does this approach model intellectual virtue? If you're a Christian watching this, would you be okay with someone from another religion doing this? It seems that Eric says he would, but would you? Think about it. Imagine that you have a Muslim friend who is committed but hasn't thought too deeply into it. You finally share whatever your version of the gospel is with them and sketch out some reasons to think that Christianity is true. They seem interested and even seem to be expressing doubts about Islam as they've been watching channels like Mike Winger's or Testify. But, they say, they don't want to continue talking about it and they've committed to stop watching those channels so that they can study Islam more. Would you be okay with that? Do you think that this is what someone sincerely seeking the truth should do? It's highly questionable whether it is, or whether the hypothetical person is really being objective at all. Philosopher Michael Humer lists three ways we can strive for objectivity. Number one, identify your biases. Number two, diversify your information sources. And number three, challenge yourself. Regarding number two, he writes, when you learn about an issue, do not just learn from people you agree with. Gather information and ideas from people on different sides. Eric's advice does not seem in step with any of this. So let me give you some better advice, doubting Christians. If you already understand Christianity and why people believe it, then there is no reason to stop watching channels like mine. If you're just now entering this apologetics, counter-apologetics space, then find some channels you like who argue for different positions and watch them all. Simple. But if doubts scare you and your local church is too inept to handle it, then head on over to talkaboutdoubts.com. Oh, jeez, Rick, I, I've been really struggling lately. I, I just keep having these doubts, and there's, there's no one to talk to. Oh, man, Morty, that's horrible. But I have the solution, Morty. Talkaboutdoubts.com. Talkaboutdoubts.com. That's right, Morty. Go to talkaboutdoubts.com. That's right. Talk about your doubts. Talkaboutdoubts.com. Oh, gee, you're, you're saying I go to talkaboutdoubts.com? Yes, Morty. That's what I said. Look at all these people you can talk to, Morty. Don't you want to talk to this guy, Morty? I have too much fun with this sometimes, honestly.